Hello and welcome to the Pod Culture Vultures. As always, I'm joined with Kevin Rooney. Hello, hello, hello. I just need a bit of admin. Did you get that memo? Uh, when we spoke about Stir Crazy, uh, I think I kept referring to uh, the costumes that they dressed up in as chickens and uh, clearly they were woodpeckers. I wouldn't normally bother mentioning it and that, but you know there's going to be some dickhead out there. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> they're not chickens, they're woodpeckers, because they said the song. No. What shall we talk about? This week, we have looked at the 1987 movie Mannequin. Uh, obviously, a film from our younger days, I would say. Is it one of the films you kind of were into when you were younger? Oh, mate, I, I loved it. This is a brilliant film. It's it's a really good, feel-good, romantic 80s comedy. It's, it's got everything you want in it, to be honest with you. You know, the, fa- the fashion, the rolled-up sports coats, you know, the, the Durham Durham look, left, right and centre. You've got G.W. Bailey in there from Police Academy. You've got and- Andrew McCarthy from old uh, uh, Pretty in Pink. The gorgeous, beautiful Kim uh, Cattrall. Do you, do you pronounce it Cattrall or Cattrall? I think it's Cattrall, but I mean, I don't think she... Well, let's say Cattrall. I can't see her uh, listening to this, to be honest, so... <laughs> <laughs> no, probably, pro- probably not. Abu, Bakar, al-Baghdadi. It's got a killer soundtrack, you know, um, and I remember having the old Starship 7-inch vinyl uh, on s- a single, and... I, I think this one just hits all the bases, just gets into it. It doesn't take itself seriously. And there's just so many golden moments in there. How about you? Yeah, I um, I saw it when I was a lot younger, um, before you kind of get into the thing of thinking it's like chick flicks, you, you know what I mean? My sister really liked it, so we did watch it quite a lot. Um, but yeah, I can remember watching it and um, thinking, obviously, with Kim Cattrall, being in it, she she was definitely a trigger, <laughs> <laughs> especially in that, even as a young man. But um, I enjoyed it when I was younger, and it's a film that I thought I haven't watched in a long, long time, and I just wanted to watch it again almost with uh, a fresh, well, I say fresh, but older pair of eyes just to see what I got from it this time. But as you say, it's simple, it's just a bit of fun, it's definitely not taking itself too seriously. Um, I think you forgot to mention there, uh, James Spader is in it as well, isn't he? I purposely didn't mention him because I thought we were going to mention him a little bit later because he plays quite a funny character. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, pissed on your beans. Hey, the fool's still warm. Love it. Andrew McCarthy's character, is he's got the girlfriend, Roxy, Yeah. who's that... Um, Typical sort of yuppie, 80s yuppie. She's sort of high up and kissing ass to the top. But I really did think she looked like Pretty Patel. <laughs> <laughs> didn't get over the fact how much she looked like her. Yeah, no, I, I, I definitely agree with you. Yeah, she, she, she was like a dead ringer, wasn't she? Um, and again, like going back to the fashion classic, sort of like, you know, there's a lot of grey in it, isn't it? Surrounded by um, these kind of, uh, are like I don't know, like sort of pinks. And light blue colours, and she's got the like the typical grey jacket with the roll like rolled up to the elbow, so the hair tied back, the old lippy, the old yuppie look. Oh my god, baby, the bloody London bot just missed you! Holy bloody mother of god, Jesus fucking my god, baby, come back to London Bow nearly hit ya! Oh my god, baby, you alright? Well, I was just gonna finish saying about his girlfriend, Roxy. She's really annoying. She's really quite annoying and, I don't know, she's kind of like the uh, the typical aggressive female yuppie that they kind of had, where you know that he's not going to stay with her because of that, he's going to find someone that would be more softer. But I just thought, like her, and probably Pretty Patel, I'd really like to hate fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> what, like real, real aggressive style? Yeah, just a hate fuck. It's kind of like, I guess that's kind of someone you don't agree with, you don't particularly like that much, but you still would. You dudes are setting a bad example. Can't hear you, bro. Can't you see I'm getting my beauty sleep? 
Oh, I I'm sorry. Move it! They just don't look right together, do you know what I mean? Like, he rocks up. No, they don't. In his bowling shoes and his red Harley Davidson bike. And she's sort of giving it all the big ones outside that neon glowing shopping mall with a boss coming out with his top button done up and his blow-dried Don Johnson haircut. And it's just... A... Yeah, BJ. BJ, that's it, yeah. So it's $10 for a BJ, $12 for an HJ, $15 for a ZJ. What's a ZJ? <laughs> if you have to ask, big man, you can't afford it. My favourite character in it, <laughs> and it's the most, I guess, the most politically incorrect person that would sort of stand up now, is... I don't know. I don't know if he's French. Armand. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She's. He's constantly trying to get Roxy into bed, but he's just so blatant with it. And what it reminded me of is, do you know, um, the old cartoon uh, Pepe Le Pew. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's a skunk, and then for some reason the uh, female cat gets a white stripe down her back. <laughs> and then the rest of the cartoon is basically Pepe Le Pew just trying to find ways to rape a cat with some paint on it, basically. <laughs> but it just kind of reminded me of that. He's just, like, sniffing round her. <laughs> he says at one point, I'd really like to sink my teeth into your little bottom. <laughs> <laughs> just fucking pure sexual harassment. I don't know about you, but I've always wanted to make love in the middle of the lady's shoe department. The smell of fine leather. <sighs> Can I uh, show you something in your size? He's full on, like, ready to give her one, like, on the floor in the bloody... What was it, like, the perfume aisle? He's got, like, a real thing for it. And he's got, like, uh, like that really bad leather jacket with no sleeves on. As I say, it just reminded me of the Pepe Le Pew cartoons. And I just don't... I wonder if they still have those on, because that literally is... A little French skunk <laughs> trying to force himself on <laughs> what he thinks is another skunk, but it's like constantly trying to get away, and it's like, no, 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 you, no, 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 come along, little pussycat. Hold on to this, will you? Keep you in curry for a few weeks, will you? He finally gets the opportunity to give her one. <laughs> and it's just like game over really quickly. But yeah. for the last hour, he's been chasing around, sniffing yeah. around it. He gets his, <laughs> his opportunity to like, you know, get on the job as it were. And uh, <laughs> and the little admiral was just not having it, is he? No, and he's like really upset, obviously. But I just think it's funny because you just see him, he's sat there and he's just got his feet poking out at the end of the bed. And he keeps looking at it, <laughs> Danny, and talking to it. What's wrong with you? <laughs> but yeah, I think he he was quite funny. You've got a little old dear who's uh, was in uh, Golden Girls. She kind of owns the uh, department store that's uh, <laughs> going downhill, isn't it? Basically, they've lost sales and everything because of Matthew McCarthy. I can't even say his name properly. It's Andrew Mac McCarthy. Andrew, but well, I say Matthew McConaughey. That's all I want to say. All right, 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 all right. <laughs> Yeah, not Matthew McConaughey. Um, no, Andrew McCarthy's girlfriend obviously works for the better shopping mall. Yeah, and the, the woman from Golden Girls owns the one that's um, not, not doing too well. Nice to have a chat to someone who knows this stuff, though. It's a shit business. For some reason, Andrew McCarthy is working for a company that makes mannequins, and he's basically made her but he's made her with lots of features and things that you wouldn't normally get on a mannequin. Or what do we call them in England? Just shop dummies, isn't it? She's the dummy! Yeah, he makes her, but obviously spends ages. What confused me as well is you don't normally get nipples on uh, mannequins. Maybe you do. I don't know. Anyway, he puts a lot of features on the uh, mannequin, and um, obviously his boss doesn't like how long he's taken to do it because he's basically an artist and he's a sculptor and he wants to be really creative um so his boss fires him because he's taken like what is it six days or something like that to make this one <laughs> <laughs> he's supposed to be doing three a day or something no, yeah is it, is it something like two or three a month because he's going for a going for quality isn't it and the, and the guy says now you should be doing like pulling two or three a day and then he gets fired, and then it goes off in this little montage, doesn't it, for like sort of three or four minutes. 
And it's just like, and he's in all these different sectors. He's like, he's like a pizza man. He's creating like this really sort of like attractive looking pizza. He gets fired because he's just sort of taken too long. And then he's, uh, then he's doing a bit of an Edward Scissorhands, isn't he? So he's supposed to be trimming the, trimming the bush, but he turns it into a rabbit. You're fired. Get your paycheck and get out of here. The shopping mall that's not doing very well, the mannequin he made's in the window. And obviously he recognises it. I mean, it is a bit weird because he's. Uh, I guess they've tried to work. They've tried to work around it by the fact that he's created it. I mean, we haven't even got to the bit where she's going to come to life and all that business, and he doesn't obviously know that. And he's still literally perving over this mannequin <laughs> that, <laughs> that I imagine probably could have been a much more sinister type of film than what. <laughs> actually was when you have documentaries about people marrying different weird objects like some bird married the Eiffel Tower because it turned her on <laughs> yeah. and a geezer who married a donkey but yeah I just thought hello mate he's going a bit over the top it reminds me <laughs> I think it might have been in Trailer Park Boys where one of them they get a shot mannequin <laughs> and he just drills a hole where the mouth <laughs> <laughs> Just all oh, fuck me. Oh, the little Mary has an assistant now, huh? Where do you people come from? Ohio. Ohio? You mean they got him in Ohio? Is there a scene where he takes her into a cupboard and he disappears for quite some time? But he hasn't he, he hasn't even tried to mask it, is he? He ain't come in he hasn't come out with a change of clothes or anything like that. He sort of thought Hello, I'll pop in there for a little bit of hours, your father. And then all the co workers are hanging outside, like, oh, he's in there with that mannequin again. And he comes out all chuffed. And you think, he hasn't even, he hasn't even tried, you know, to sort of like pre to mask it or pretend he's doing something else. He's got in there and given the mannequin one. <laughs> yeah. He ends up getting a job in there. He starts trying to find where the mannequin is. And of course, he um, gives it a kiss. As you would, I say, it's still a bit weird. He don't know it's going to come to life, and uh, like the frog in the Frog of the Princess, she comes to life, starts giving him a quick one off the wrist. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> but, <laughs> um, no. <laughs> but, um, anyway, she can only come to life if she's in front of her true love, which obviously she is. They start running around the mall like they own it. And uh, then start doing these uh, really good uh, shop windows, don't they, with all the mannequins done up and everything. Um, but it's around, this is the time when you get uh, Hollywood. Never you fear, your Hollywood is here. Very stereotypical homosexual man, homosexual black man, who I think very much uh, kind of mirrors uh, Little Richard <laughs> quite a lot in uh, the way he talks and... Uh, his style, baby. But, uh, yeah, I, I think he's funny, but, again, I don't know if that would be acceptable now because he's very, very, very out there, isn't he? He's as camp as Christmas and doesn't mind showing it. Oh, he is, and what a pair of sunglasses as well. Yeah. And his car is a beautiful pink Cadillac. It's amazing. <laughs> with a car cover. That's as I was going to say, even when they stop to go somewhere else, he still has to cover it up with his special... Cover, doesn't he? Hello, what have we here? This is where you've got James Spader, who's kind of, what is he, like a manager, isn't he? But he's a right, proper middle manager tosser. Yeah, he looks like uh, like a member of the Gestapo as well, doesn't he? He does, yeah. Because he's got his, like, his slick combed <laughs> hair, his little glasses, he's all dressed in black. And there's just something kind of slimy about the geezer, isn't there? Definitely, he looks like he's actually um, <laughs> sweating spunk. <laughs> <laughs> he's definitely up to no good. Yeah, he's but he's what he's actually doing is he's working for the guy in the the big mall, isn't he? Yeah, he's, he's an infiltrator, isn't he? He's, he's, he's a little mole <laughs> orchestrating the downfall of little Miss Golden Girl. <laughs> Can't remember what her name is <laughs> Miss. No. Off, yeah. off for a moment now. I thought it was the uh, the old dear from Wedding Singer with. Fear. Who serves him up with meatballs with the <laughs> when he does the piano lessons? Are you nervous about your penis? Uh, what? Well, are you nervous about showing a new girl your penis? No, nah, ain't uh, <laughs> It's the old dear from uh, Golden Girls. So he's quite slimy, isn't he? And quite a different character for 
James Spader, I think I don't think you've really seen him play that sort of character in anything else, have you? No, I haven't, because I mean, the only two that really come to mind is The Blacklist, which I haven't seen, but I'm aware of, and um, uh, Stargate with uh, old Kurt Russell. Normally his characters are quite intense, and he, he looks, you know, more of a bad... I mean, even in um, Pretty in Pink. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, he usually plays like more of a serious kind of dramatical role, and in this one, he's almost playing, like I don't know, something out of like a carry-on film. <laughs> 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 my favourite as well yeah. oh hello mm. but um, and then you've got um, oh what's his name you, the, the guy from Police Academy I've forgotten his name oh G.W. Bailey G.W. Bailey yeah <laughs> um, which is funny because he's in Police Academy the first one and Kim Cattrall's in that isn't she it's that switcher I caught him doing awful things to a half naked dummy Got his little his uh, dog, any Rambo. Rambo. Yeah. I call him that because he likes to draw first blood. <laughs> the poor little geezer though just keeps getting stitched up, doesn't he? Because he he has like an accent, doesn't he? He has to drag him along on a on a radio flyer, little cart thing, doesn't he? And then you see him uh, when he goes to see James Spader and he's laying on the floor and he's got like an ice pack on his head and he just looks completely. Uh, <laughs> bummed over yeah because he has to he kind of gets retired doesn't he after that <laughs> and he gets another dog doesn't he Terminator, Terminator. <laughs> <laughs> yeah because you, you've got those little references and you've even got the Mad Max one at the beginning haven't you with uh, with his yuppie missus's yuppie friends yeah and as he turns up on the bike they're like oh here comes the road warrior yeah so there's, there's quite a few like little cultural uh, bits and pieces in there, but they've they've into what intertwined, don't they, from like, other films and that. But also, it's just kind of annoying with all of our mates that are like that. I mean, he is driving a Harley. Probably should have had a BMW or something, a soft top. Mm. Really, am the man about town. Mm. <laughs> mm. Yeah, yarder, yeah, mm. with his yeah, massive yeah, shoulder yeah, blades, yeah, yeah. mullet billowing in the wind. <laughs> <laughs> the moulet. There's something comforting in defeat. I really like losing. <laughs> One of the funny scenes in that is when he goes to a restaurant that he apparently has worked in before and caused a fire. He has the conversation with him and blah, blah, blah. Then he goes to leave, but then he knocks into someone and starts another fire. What I think is really funny is the first thing he does to put it out is he grabs the matri- <laughs> <laughs> he grabs the maitre d's wig and <laughs> starts batting it out. Like, Get it out. <laughs> Which which clearly does fuck all. And then he just kind of leaves it there, don't yeah. he? And just buggers off. But also, that's going to be highly <laughs> flammable as well, a bloody syrup. <laughs> <laughs> Whips his syrup off and starts patting it away there. But... <laughs> yeah, so, the Major D panics. Yeah. He's panicking when he comes in, doesn't he? He's like, you, you've come here to die? Because he's yeah. basically almost burnt the place down, doesn't he? Yeah. And then he does that little uh, that little hiccup towards the end. <laughs> and he burns it down there again. Yeah. Wallop. Whips out, like saying out of Benny Hill. And you, sir, are you waiting to receive my limp penis? How dare get your hands on me? Obviously, what we haven't explained is that Kim Cattrall is a mannequin that can come alive when she's on her own with Andrew McCarthy. But when anyone else is around, she goes back into her mannequin form. So, like you were saying before, he goes, to, walks around with the mannequin going into closets and um, I think at one time he goes into the women's, uh, women's bathroom with her and all of the people that work there, they just seem to be all right with it. They kind of think it's cute. I mean, I don't even think in 87 they would have thought it was cute that some guy was having it with a, <laughs> with a mannequin. Yeah, because that, that, yeah, that's, that's when it just... I, I found that was just kind of weird that they just like let him get on with it because at that point it reminded me of a film which came some years later called Lars and the Real Girl with Ryan Gosling and that centres around like a, a, a lonely young man in a, in a little American town and yeah, he's just sort of really lonely, and he buys this like sex doll, don't he? And but the whole, but it's quite cute because like because he doesn't have a partner, and he's he's just like unlucky in love. The whole town like um, they sort of embrace it, don't they? And, and he's such a like a lovely 
loving, adorable figure, even like from an audience point of view, but also from like the townspeople. So they all get behind it. They rally behind it, and like this this doll then becomes like his girlfriend, which people acknowledge. So you can understand it in that film. But where where is Mannequin? It's just like this geezer turns up because he saved the old dear. He gets a job, and the first thing he's do is knock is knocking off the mannequin in the in the lady's bog. And they're they're all like, ah, oh, it's cute, isn't it? Like let let him yeah. crack on, let him crack on. I was like, I'm just thinking, that's just <laughs> so a, that's just yeah. a bit strange. But also, she's talking, so they must think that he's doing her voice back at him. The acceptance of the people that work there of him taking the mannequin into toilets and things to basically shag it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, unbeknown to them that she is turned into uh, a lovely, freshy, fleshy Kim Cattrall. But the thing that I noticed, that I haven't noticed before, and I know probably quite often I'm picking these films apart, but the thing is, I just think (laughs) that's what we're here to do. I mean, it doesn't take anything away from it. The mannequin's facial expressions keep changing and no one really notices. (laughs) Now, that's one thing. One thing I did um, read up on was... She spent six weeks with a sculpture, uh, sculptor in Santa Monica to create these these different ones that were different expressions. So I suppose you can understand that why there would be different expressions. But yeah, nobody seems to cotton on to the fact that this mannequin, this is her facial expressions are just constantly changing. You can understand the poses because he's changing the arms, but they haven't noticed anything going on in the old boat race up there. And uh, it's, it's just again, it's just an, I suppose yeah, you, 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 it's just one of those things you can just you could pick at like any film you can just sort of pick at it. Um, but it, it it's quite an obvious one though, wasn't it? But no one does pick yeah. up on it because I just thought that one of the times because he's not got loads of heads, different heads <laughs> like words or gummage <laughs> <laughs> or, <laughs> or Crichton. Um, <laughs> No, this one he goes in there with um, the mannequin with just a normal mannequin's expression, and then comes out and she's got her eyes closed with a sort of her lips pursed together <laughs> while they were having a kiss. After seeing that, you'd, you'd want to find a mannequin that looked like Kim Cattrall. <laughs> I'll tell you what's funny though. <laughs> Obviously, at the end, she's the the ex girlfriend of uh, Andrew McCarthy takes Kim Cattrall <laughs> as a mannequin away and then tries to destroy it. But, obviously, she don't know which one it is, so she takes all of them. And for some weird reason, the department store... <laughs> and I'm picking again. <laughs> but the department store has got a special conveyor belt that goes <laughs> up in the air just to drop mannequins in it to munch them up into nothing. <laughs> Why would you need that? But also, you've got, you've got the chute that comes down from the ceiling, so therefore you've... There must be something on the floor above, like some sort of like trap door of doom or something like that, which they chuck all this shit down. And uh, I mean, yeah, it's obviously just to add I suppose, a little bit more dr- drama to it, though. But <laughs> what a waste of money, though, just just to shred it. Yeah, but I just uh, it's in a kind of do you know, like in uh, Superman Three, when he turns into bad Superman, pissed up Superman. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it goes to the, the what's it? It's like a play scrapyard. That's what you'd call it. It goes to Stephen Avery's uh, scrapyard. <laughs> 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 so, and uh, he fights himself. But there's a conveyor about there that has got rocks. Oh no, no, no! It's got bits of car parts there that's getting crushed. It's Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom that's got the rocks where it's getting crushed, and uh, in that he ends up getting squashed under it, doesn't he? Bomber Harris. There's a theme coming out of this, isn't there? Eighties movies towards at the end, that, like that sort of jewel or the bad guy or trying to save like the uh, the person in distress. There has to be a conveyor belt. Yeah, or something that's going to crush you, squash you. A fish <laughs> called Wanda with uh, what's his name, <laughs> the steamroller. <laughs> I always find it best not to explain. It adds a certain mystique to one's reputation. Oh God! Actually, the worst one that is. In, have you seen one of the saw the saw films when the guy gets squashed? It's kind of like the um, trash compactor on the Death Star, but much more sinister because they get crushed in it at the end of one film, 
And at the beginning of the next Saw film, they open it up and, of course, he looks like a fucking pizza. Looks like Jeff Goldblum at the end of The Fly. Yeah. Or he looks like Peter in that episode of Family Guy where he's got no bones. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that was a bit of a geek out. That's quite a lot of pop culture references all in one sentence, yeah? Well, that's so, how we roll, isn't it? We don't just limit is. ourselves to one of them. So if you don't know any of those uh, pop culture references, you need to look it up. Or you shouldn't be listening to our shit. Klopek. What is that, Slavic? No. Oh, about a nine on the tension scale, Rube. Kim Cattrall's the last mannequin that's going to fall over. She becomes human um, because he's, he's done an act of true love from, by saving her. Oh, I guess that's what they're fucking getting at. I don't know. Anyway, so all's well that ends well there. But the guy that works there, the little guy <laughs> with the glasses, he starts trying to find a mannequin for himself to come to life. <laughs> but, of course, Andrew McCarthy's girlfriend's in there. She's, she's in all the rubbish, isn't she, because it's all fallen on her. <laughs> so he pulls her out and starts kissing her, doesn't he? <laughs> he, th- he thinks his luck has changed, doesn't he? I mean... <laughs> And he does that like funny little dive at the end. He's like, a, he looks a little bit like, <laughs> sort of dives in like something out of a cartoon, doesn't he? Rada, 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 rada. Andrew McCarthy's on his um, Harley with uh, Kim Cattrall's mannequin on the back, and there's an old couple. <laughs> the old lady goes, <gasps> "Look at him with the dummy." <laughs> and the old fella goes, "Who are you to criticize?" It's a good film. It's a good film. It's a good sort of um, takes you back in time. I do think, like you were saying earlier, though, about the clothes and that, I just thought, we've got to a point now where our clothes are so fucking boring, aren't they? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, like, we were watching it, me and the missus, and um, it's just like, it's one of those 80s movies, and I, I love, like, the 80s, like, everything about it, you know, the, the fashion, the music, the attitude brilliant there's another pop culture in there for you guys if you know what that is but yeah just like i remember sitting there with her and i was like oh, i would have i would have loved to have grown up you know 10 years older in the 80s to be able to go to work in a pair of bowling shoes and rolling your your jacket sleeves up do you know what i mean wearing like a like a, I don't know, like a pink or some sort of like bright t-shirt underneath with the most like ridiculous flock of seagulls hair and you just don't really have that anymore. No. I think probably we had it a bit in the 90s and early noughties because um, we, we used to be into the... Well, we still are into the old pop-punk stuff and uh, yeah, the uh, kind of stuff and the new the new metal. Um, but, yeah, we had the bowling, bowling shirts and uh, the big shorts and I think there was even a time when me and you dressed in uh, golfing gear, weren't there, for a little while. <laughs> oh yeah, well, we used to go down the old tent fold, didn't we? After a couple of music lessons at, uh, at college, and I was yeah, yeah getting to the old, old Frank golfing. Spencer tops. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we, we did that, didn't we? And um, yeah, we kind of dressed that like that when we, we were out and that. But um, yeah, enough. Like, no, I tell you what, I blame Oasis with their fucking boring parkers and that so yeah oh i bet they were sweaty under that underneath on the on a hot summer's day yeah it's not just them i suppose it's also i mean not talking about music but blur as well they didn't really look it's just fucking jeans and a fred perry <laughs> a scruffy but, um, haircut <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, you punts scruffy haircuts yeah i mean they all had the, the decent hairstyles one way or another it's what I was trying to say earlier on as well about the female who had the slick back ponytail. <laughs> I wrote in my notes, the female gecko. Hello, you have to press in, you have to press on, you have to go on. What I did find as well after it, just as a little side, which I didn't realise, or I had realised and I'd forgotten, but there was a sequel called um, Mannequin on the Move. Yeah, I, I I remember I remember seeing it, but back in the day, I haven't watched it since. The only thing I remembered was they did make a sequel. It wasn't anywhere as good, and it's had Hollywood in it again. That was it. That's the only the only things I remember. The only yeah, because I watched it last night. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't, did you? 
Yeah, I did because I thought because I didn't know. I knew I thought it's going to be shit. It wasn't as good as the original, obviously, but it was still to me. It was still quite watchable. Um, I mean, it, it had uh, was it Christy Swanson in it was the oh yeah yeah, and she is lovely. Mm. Um, but <laughs> mm, lovely, <laughs> lovely, and uh, the guy in it, I don't know what his name is, but he was the main character in uh, Fright Night. All right, yeah, yeah, that's oh, another brilliant film. If we do start doing some horror stuff, that's a good one to do. Fright Night, um, but yeah, it's them two in it, and it's kind of similar story, it's just that she's been frozen in time since sort of like the middle ages. And then uh, ends up in the time, which I think that was made in ninety one, uh, and comes to life. But uh, same, pretty much similar story. Um, but yeah, Hollywood's in it. He's the only char- character that's in the original, that's in the sequel. Uh, but it also had uh, Bernie from Weekend at Bernie's, was kind of like the um, villain of the piece in it. I don't remember. I don't remember that. That's another Andrew McCarthy movie. Oh yeah, that's what I thought. Because Andrew McCarthy was in Weekend at Bernie's, but not Mannequin Two. It's like one of those uh, Five Degrees of Kevin Bacon things, isn't it? But yeah, he's supposed to be like the evil count who's trying to again. He's trying to have his way with old uh... Slippy, Slappy, Simmon, Simon, Simon, Swanson, Swanson. Swanson. Obviously, she don't want none of it because he's a... Well, he's a fucking ugly Greek-looking bloke, isn't he, really? Don't want that all over you, do you? Get your goddamn hands off my motherfucking junk! I'm just going to, like, read out some of the films that came out in 87 and what a year 87 was. Okay, so you start off with Beverly Hills Cop 2, Beautiful. Dragnet, right, okay? Yeah. Hamburger Hill, Dirty Dancing, <laughs> um... <laughs> <laughs> Throw Mama from the Train, Planes, Trains and Automobiles. Oh. Okay, you've got Hellraiser 1, Angel Heart, <laughs> Witches of Eastwick, Overboard, No Way Out, The yeah. Living Daylights, Good Morning Vietnam, Inner Space, Wall Street, oh. there's your gecko, yeah. Adventures and Babysitting, oh. The Running Man, Spaceballs, Empire of the Sun, Three Men and a Little, Three Men and a Baby, uh, Full Metal Jacket, Untouchables, um, Batteries Not Included, uh, The Lost Boys with the Hames, and then and then one, two, three of my all-time best films ever made. Yeah. Robocop, oh, yeah. Predator, yeah. and Lethal Weapon. Weapon. I knew that was going to... I was waiting for you to say Lethal Weapon. So, listen to your friend here. He knows what he's talking about. I don't think you really want to go to South Africa. Why not? Because you're black. As I said uh, previously, if you've watched Cobra Kai, you do watch it and think, actually, Daniel's son is a bit of a kid bellend. But I watched the second one when they go to Japan. Mr Miyagi's dad's dying. I mean, even in the film, I think Daniel LaRusso says... Well, I'm paraphrasing, but he goes, oh, fucking hell, what, is he still alive? I thought he was long dead. Because <laughs> <laughs> you look like fucking Yoda, mate. No, but... <laughs> anyway, they go... <laughs> they go um... Anyway, he ends up going to Japan, Okinawa, with uh, Mr Miyagi. As soon as they get off the plane or whatever and walk into the where he, town where he grew up, he's got some beef left behind here that he had when he was, like, 18 before he fucked off with his old best mate. They're, what, in their... Fucking, well, you don't know, do you? Their 60s or something? 60-odd. He's straight there, Miyagi's best mate. Yeah, he's still fucking holding a grudge against him and wants to beat him to death. It's like, oh, <laughs> fucking hell. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it's like, it's, yeah, I mean, would, uh, but anyway, it, it all ultimates in uh, Daniel's son having to have a fight with this pretty skilled uh, Japanese guy on sort of an island, sort of in the middle of nowhere where there's a big crowd. And basically, it's a fight to the death. And I just thought, I bet LaRusso just turned around to Miyagi and said, look, all in all, all, Mr Miyagi, right, 
I kind of regret coming on this fucking holiday. <laughs> <laughs> I but, thought I was going to do a little bit of sightseeing, taking yeah. some of the, the local cuisine, yeah. and you've done me up like a right fucking kipper. I've got to now do over this geezer, because if I don't, he's going he's gonna to break my legs and everything else. Break everything else, going to kill him. Do you think anybody wants a roundhouse kick to the face while I'm wearing these bad boys? Mr. Miyagi says, oh, I need some pots for the bonsai trees. There's uh, a shop across the road that does, makes pots up. He skips across the road. Of course, there's some young bird in there making them up. He's straight in there. You fancy going out? I'll pick you up at eight. And she's like, oh, yeah. It's like, is, there, is this the Karate Kid or is it fucking James Bond? No, 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 stop getting Bond wrong! I don't like Trump, but... I don't give a shit that he's in Home Alone 2 for, like, 30 seconds. If anything, it makes it more of a talking point, maybe. I think, yeah, look, there he is there before he, was, you know, did all that. It's not... If you cut him out of Home Alone 2, it's not going to cut him out the last four years of office, is it? No, it's not like it's going to eradicate anything that he's done in the last four years. Personally, I just don't see the point in erasing things because you don't like it now. That's not how we move forward. That's just denying the past and kind of letting people of the future live in ignorance and not allow them to understand things that have happened before and injustices that have happened before and why that sort of thing shouldn't happen again. Well, no, because, I mean, where, where does it then end? I mean, we, we saw what Lucas did to the Star Wars films. If, if, they, if they start cutting out, start cutting out Trump... From the, from this film, where where does it bloody end? Does, does that does that mean that does that mean like a, a filmmaker is going to be you know making a film with some kind of like fear that you know in years to come their their piece of art is going to have to be tampered with because the future generation might not like something that's in their film at that current time. You did hit on something there though, because like obviously where Lucas is tampered, it's his own film and he has put extra bits in it, but I mean. If you changed Trump to like a Dewback or something, or uh, a, an Ewok, something like that, it might be more palatable. No, I will not be quiet, Chewbacca. Why doesn't anyone listen to me? Oh, look, is that always like uh, Kevin Space, isn't it? That Kevin Spacey was removed from that Ridley Scott movie a few years ago. I still haven't got around to watching it though. After after the whole scandal of him, they decided to reshoot all of his parts with Christopher Plummer in like a few days or so. I mean, it's right for Christopher Plummer because he went on and won a bloody Oscar for it. But you know what a ball lake that must be. Well, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, yeah. So Jeffrey Jones, who's the principal in that, allegedly he got picked up for the old uh, uh, spot of nonsense. You know what I mean? <laughs> no one's come up in arms about that, have they? No, it's it's, it's a bit they selective. Want Ferris Bueller or any other film that he's in, Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice, yeah. So we're we gonna airbrush him out of everything I mean it's like you said where'd you stop where'd you fucking stop lad <laughs> you die them saying oh it's only a prank so I don't give a shit what it is mate you're going down <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah I just I just find it really annoying that there's those clips of people doing that and it's it's not you're just I don't know you're just picking on members of the public and they're always older people or you, you know what I mean it's never another young person because obviously they'd be fly to what they're doing I suppose but there was another one that was in England and it's just ridiculous it's about a gang <laughs> I really sound fucking old now there's a gang of uh, about eight or ten youths in an Asda, and they're all just riding their bikes up and down the aisles and just not giving a oh, shit. Flying fuck. <laughs> yeah, there's a video of it, and they're going up and down. This is now as well where you've got to do the social distancing. There's people wearing masks. Obviously, they're not. They're pissing about. There's people trying to stop them. They're just punching them out of the way and all that. And at the end, this kid just points the camera on himself and says, follow us at this and this uh, thingy. And it's like, that's not a prank. That's that's not a fucking prank, mate. That's being a fucking prick. That's not a prank. That's a felony. But I still need 
a bit of milk, full fat, which I've warmed in the micro wave. I think we've we've spoken about the film that we watched this week. All right, we've had, I've had a little moan, which is always good to get <laughs> off my chest. I get get a few things off my chest. So, uh, anything you want to add to that, Keverino? Yeah, I've, I've, it's it's been a good one. Um, I, I loved watching Mannequin uh, again. It's good to it's good to hear the the weekly update for Cobra Kai as well. I'm sure we'll get another one next week. For anyone out there on the old Twitty Twat, please follow us at Podculture V. To, to tolerate the behaviour. Fuck off! Quite. Uh, that's not a very good wording for it. But there is somebody who's actually. Your dogs get tense. In the. Anyway, that's it for this one. Take it easy out there. We'll see you soon. <laughs> good. Goodly byload. Ta ta.